There are over 640 REITs available on the US exchanges alone, but how do you find the best for your portfolio? In this video, I'll show you how to pick REIT stocks, why I don't invest in some of the highest dividend yields available, and why an entire category of REITs could be dead money for years. Then I'll reveal the five best REITs for your 2020 portfolio. We're talking real estate investment trust today on Let's Talk Money. Be dead. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. A special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, nation, we are on the last video on our stock sector series and this one is going to be my favorite. We've covered the best stocks for 2020 in 10 stock sectors, but today we're talking about one of the best builders of wealth in all of investing. Those of you in the nation know I'm a big believer in real estate. I started my professional career as a commercial property analyst while still in college before managing my own portfolio of rental properties. The cash flow from property is unbeatable and, and there's just something about owning a real asset, a real piece of land. Not only is real estate investing going to produce cash flows of 5 to 8% a year plus those price gains, it's one of the best ways to diversify your wealth and protect you from a stock market crash. This is going to be a longer video because we've got a lot of room to cover. I'll first show you those different types of real estate investment trusts, those REITs that trade just like stocks and give every investor the chance to be in this property wealth builder. I'll then reveal why you need to be careful about those mortgage REITs, the REIT stocks that pay dividends of 10% and higher and why I'm not investing in an entire property type in REITs. We'll also look at how REITs compared to stocks in the past and what real estate looks like in 2020. Then I'm going to share my five favorite REIT stocks for your portfolio for that diversification and returns. It's all part of that 11 video series uncovering the best companies in each stock sector. Over those 11 episodes, one for each stock sector, I showed you how to pick the best of breed company in each. We looked at some of the big trends and how to pick stocks to buy in each sector. Now, if you're coming in later to the series, I'll link in the first comment below to the most recent video. I'll also be linking in the video description below all the videos in the series so you can see those and check those out in each sector. Now, I love talking about real estate investment trust, those REITs, because it is such a great way for Main Street investors to get to that real estate in their portfolio. A REIT is a special type of company that owns real estate and gets a tax break from the government, a tax break for passing the majority of profits on to investors. So REITs are not only a super efficient way to manage property because you don't get that corporate tax drag that you do with other companies, it's also an easy way for regular investors to diversify their portfolio. Whether you've got residential rental properties or are saving up for that first investment, REITs give you the opportunity to invest in different property types and in every region of the US. Now, while equity REITs, so that's the real estate investment trust that invests directly in real estate and properties and owns those properties, while those are about 80% of the market, there are also something called mortgage REITs or M REITs. I get a question about one of these M REIT stocks at least twice a day, so I wanted to highlight these and tell you why you might want to be careful here. M REITs are companies that invest in real estate mortgages instead of that actual property. Okay, they borrow on short term rates and invest then in those long term commercial mortgages. Now, this is important and where a lot of investors get trapped. Those M REITs use a huge amount of leverage, like 10 times their equity or more, to buy those investments and, and produce those dividend yields of 10% or higher. For example, this iShares Mortgage Real Estate Fund, ticker REM, holds shares of 36 M REITs and pays an 8.5% dividend yield. So these M REITs are really attractive and investors are pulled into those by those huge dividends, but a lot of times that's the only return you're going to see on these. Because these mortgage REITs use some high leverage and they're so tied to interest rates, they are really volatile around those changes in rates. Whenever rates decrease, people start prepaying their mortgages and suddenly the M REITs are stuck with that increased cash flow and they now have to reinvest it at a lower rate. Now another problem lately for these mortgage REITs is that flattened yield curve. So this is the fact that those long-term interest rates aren't that much higher than the shorter term rates. That means these M REITs aren't making as much money, the spread between borrowing short term and then investing long term. The result is that these types of REITs, those M REITs aren't the spectacular investments they might appear just by looking at that dividend yield. Now I do think you can make some money here and I'm going to highlight one mortgage REIT in our 5 2020 picks, but I would focus most of my money in those equity REIT stocks. And if you want to talk about returns, even through the worst real estate crash in US history, REITs have outperformed stocks. Here I took data from the National Association of REITs Equity REIT Index, that blue line, versus the S&P 500 index in red. 
over 30 years to 2017, the total return on REITs is 10% a year versus a return of just 7% annualized on stocks. Now, most REITs just had a stellar year because of those falling interest rates. For equity REITs, because, because they're so highly leveraged, lower interest rates actually help because they can borrow at a lower rate. Now, the high dividend yield also helps to attract investors into those stocks looking for cash flow, so REITs are up about 25% this year. I am not going to tell you that 2020 is going to be anywhere near as good as that, but the fundamentals do still look solid. Uh, interest rates are still low, and real estate companies can get all the funding they need to buy those properties. Uh, there hasn't been a bubble in any pr particular property type, and, and the economy looks like it's going to grow at at least that marginal rate that should support commercial property. Now, there is one property type that I'm avoiding, though, uh, and those of you in the nation have heard me talk about this. You know, retail property, so we're talking shopping malls, uh, department stores, and any other type in that has just been a value trap for years. The shopping mall REITs are trading well below the price of other REITs and, and showing much higher dividend yields, and that's kind of a dangerous thing right now. Online sales are growing at 13% annual pace and still only account for 10% of those total retail sales. Now, consumer spending is the only bright spot in the economy right now, and still these traditional retailers like Toys R Us and Sears, they're filing for bankruptcy. Mall operators are going bust left and right, and if these retailers can't su survive when the economy is growing, what happens in the next recession? So now we're going to look at how to analyze these REIT stocks, how to pick the best stocks in a bit. But if you're looking at any REIT that holds retail properties, I want you to look deeper than just that share price and the dividend yield. Now, just like the other videos in our series, I've got two real estate funds that I want to highlight here first, and then we'll look at how to pick those REITs and those five favorite REIT stocks. The first fund here is my favorite, and for everyone in the nation, and oh my God, I can't believe he's talking about the Vanguard REIT ETF again. Yeah, sorry, not sorry, because I love this fund and that all-in-one real estate play and the 3% dividend yield against a super low 0.12% expense ratio. Now, ticker VNQ holds shares in 184 REITs diversified across property types and, and has produced a nearly 13% annualized return over the last decade. Now, it does hold some REITs in that retail space, but they're a small part of the fund, and this is a strong overall play. Now, this next real estate fund isn't an equity fund or a REIT, but a crowdfunding platform for that direct approach to real estate investing. I just started investing in Fundrise earlier this year, and I love the transparency and the options for investors. Now, this site gives you direct ownership in a portfolio of properties. So, for example, I have 35 properties in my portfolio, including, including debt and equity investments. Returns have averaged over 10% a year, with about half of that being in dividends. You can start with as little as $500, and Fundrise is offering a 90-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like the platform or the investments after three months, you get your entire investment back. So I'll leave a link to Fundrise in the video description below to learn more and check out that risk-free trial. And before we look at those five best REITs for 2020, I want to show you what to look for in these investments, because these are really going to be different from what you see in these other videos, these traditional stock videos. The biggest difference here in those real estate investment trusts from those other stocks is that you can't use the price to earnings ratio. Now, I see investors trying to say that a REIT is cheap based on its PE ratio or the payout ratio, and I just die a little bit inside every time. The problem here is that earnings or net income is really a bad measure for REITs. These companies report so much depreciation expense. Okay? That's the amount they write off on their, their income, the write off on the value of the properties against their taxes. This number skews that earnings reported. Since depreciation isn't something the company actually has to pay, but they can take it off of their taxable income, earnings just look way lower than they actually are. Now, I, I know it's more accounting than you probably wanted to hear, but let me just say this one more time. You cannot use the price to earnings ratio or the payout ratio when looking at REITs. Okay, instead, what you have to do, you have to look at what's called the funds from operation or the FFO. Now, this is a measure of the actual cash flow available that a real estate company can pay out to its shareholders. Now, I don't want to get into the math here because all REITs are going to show you this number in their reporting. Basically, you're just taking that skewed net income number that's on the income statement, then adding back depreciation and a couple of these one-time items. You'll also see a lot of times this adjusted funds from operation, or the AFFO. This is just an even better measure of the company's available cash flow. So instead of using that PE ratio when you're looking at these REIT stocks, you want to find this FFO number and then measure things like the price to FFO to see if the shares are cheap or expensive compared to peers. 
You can also see how much a company is paying out in the dividends uh, compared to those funds available. So like a payout ratio against the funds available for that dividend sustainability. Next, before we get to those five REIT stocks, is that you wanna invest in a mix of property types and locations. There are six major property types here, uh, office, residential, storage, industrial, retail, and leisure. And you should really try to own REITs in at least three or four of these. Each property type is going to react differently to the economy. So by diversifying your portfolio with, with REIT stocks in a few of these, you're going to get a smoother ride and protect that cash flow. Now, most REITs invest in properties across the U.S. or even North America, so location usually isn't a problem here, but I've tried to pull up from those multiple property types in our REIT list here. First on the list of best REIT stocks to own is Crown Castle International, ticker CCI, and it's 3.6% dividend yield. CCI is a leader in connectivity with 40,000 cell towers, 70,000 small cell nodes, and 75,000 miles of fiber cable. These assets are going to be vital as internet and, small and smartphone bandwidth demand booms over the next few years. Uh, between the adoption of 5G, the Internet of Things, uh, where everything you own is connected to the net, and that push to smart cities, this company owns the assets that are going to make all that happen. Now, the company has been growing its small cell nodes over the past few years uh, to be in front of this demand. They doubled their 2018 growth with another 12,000 installed this year and, and should be positioned when the, when the demand is there. The company is guiding to 5% revenue growth next year and a 7% growth in that adjusted FFO that we talked about to $2.7 billion. Now on a per share basis, that means the shares are priced at about 21 times AFFO, which is a little pricey compared to the 17 and a half times for all REITs, but the company is only paying out 74% of its adjusted funds from operations to cover that dividend. That means a lot of room for growth and a dividend increase. Now, of the four analysts with price targets, the low estimate is for about $130 a share and the high around $152 each over the next year. Duke Realty, ticker DRE, doesn't offer the highest dividend yield with just a 2.7% yield, but this is a solid pick for growth. Duke is a leader in the industrial warehouse and logistics space with 513 properties in 20 major U.S. markets. What I love about Duke is that the business is 75% correlated to growth in e-commerce sales, while only 40% correlated to overall retail sales. Okay, if you don't speak nerd like me, that just means that the business moves much closer to those online shopping sales than, and doesn't depend on that traditional retail environment. Basically, the company rents its industrial properties to companies like Amazon and other online stores to hold inventory for those e-commerce sales. Occupancy averages 98% across its four property sizes and rent growth is 21% over the last year. Management is expecting an 8.7% growth in adjusted FFO this year to $478 million. Now, on a per share basis, that puts the shares at 27 times AFFO and a 72% FFO payout to cover the dividend. Seven analysts have price targets on the shares with a target of $33.50 at the low end to $39 per share at the high end. Realty Income, ticker O, is easily the most popular REIT and maybe one of the most popular stocks of all with a 3.6% dividend yield paid out on a monthly basis. Realty Income has 50 years of operating history and owns nearly 6,000 properties in 49 states, Puerto Rico, and the United Kingdom. Even though 83% of rental revenue is from that retail space, that theme, I'm okay with this one because it's diversified across some of the safer types of retail property like, like convenience, dollar stores, drug and groceries. Lease terms average nine years and occupancy has never been below 96% for these properties. Rent growth isn't terrifically strong at around 1% annualized, but it's consistent and supports that dividend. Now that dividend isn't the highest among REITs, but investors love the monthly payouts and the company has reported 88 consecutive quarterly increases. Now the 4.5% annualized dividend growth has beaten that 2.9% average for REITs, so, so expect this one to just keep on paying. Now adjusted funds from operation, the FFO is expected at 332 a share this year uh, with a price of 22.5 times and 82% of those funds are going to pay the dividend. So while I still like the company, I think you need to spread your investments into other REITs as well. It's a good monthly payer, but a little expensive and doesn't quite have that cash cushion that we see in other, other names on this list. AGNC Investment Corporation, ticker AGNC is our mortgage REIT pick with an 11% dividend yield and a really good bet in that M REIT theme. Now, AGNC holds a $103 billion investment portfolio with 99 billion of that in agency mortgage-backed securities. Now understand that REITs are more like financial companies, so instead of the FFO measure that we've been talking about that we've used, you can use that price to book value to value these shares. These are going to be similar to banks that we saw in our previous video on those bank stocks. 
Now, book value has been ugly for these mortgage REITs because of those, that interest rate picture, and it's fallen to $17.52 for AG&C. That means that the shares are trading just under their book value, which is a pretty good place in terms of value. One bright spot though is that the net interest spread, that's the difference between the interest rates on the investments minus those short-term rates on which the company borrows, that spread jumped in the third quarter, so it could be signaling better profitability ahead. Analysts have a low target at $16 per share and a high around $18 each over the next year, so, so like most REITs, that dividend is probably gonna be most of the return you'll see. Still, there is some room for price gain on this one, especially if that net interest spread stays higher. Ventus, ticker VTR, is a leader in the healthcare REIT theme and pays an attractive 5.6% dividend yield. Ventus owns over 1,200 properties in North America and the UK with about 54% of income coming from senior housing, and then 27% coming from medical office space. I really like this 21% of the portfolio in triple net lease uh, senior housing, which means the company is leasing space to other senior care companies as well as operating its own properties. Now the senior housing market has been really tough for the last few years. There is no doubt that the aging population is driving that demand, but, but companies just built way too many properties in the lead in. You can see that in this chart of property construction. Now that's the light blue line against the demand or property absorption in the dark blue. You see how the construction starts has been way above the demand really since 2012, but the bright spot is that it's looking like it might be turning around. Senior housing starts were their lowest level in nine years in that third quarter, and demand is at its highest level on record. Even as the company waits for that senior housing picture to improve, the medical office environment is very strong, and it has a 92% occupancy rate across its portfolio. The management expects to report 383 per share in funds from operations this year, which means the stock is trading for just 14.7 times FFO. The company pays out 82% of FFO to cover the dividend, so a little on the high side here, but this one could be a good turnaround play. The company has produced a 9% annual growth in FFO since 2001 and nine consecutive years of dividend growth, even in that weak senior housing environment. Now, Ventus is widely covered with 10 analysts providing price targets from $56 a share on the low end to a high of $72 a share over the next year. Check out all the videos in our stock sector series, starting with the video on the right, the best tech stocks for 2020 and the three criteria that I use to pick stocks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.